This is a review of set 6081 King's Mountain Fortress from the Castle Line. It is part of the Crusaders sub-theme and was released in the year 1990. It originally retailed for $58 and according to the box is 429 pieces. This is another one of the few raised base plate castles and I absolutely love raised base plates and the raised base plate castles specifically are some of my favorite LEGO sets of all time so I'm very excited to be reviewing this one. These are here the instructions and they are printed in portrait orientation. Uh, they actually have some play shots on the bottom here, strangely enough. And sadly no alternate builds on the back of these instructions and I don't have the box so I don't have any to show you of this one. Now before we start building of course I have to show off the base plate. This is a pretty standard ramp and pit design, and they use this mold for a lot of sets in the 90s. Several of the raised base plate castles use it. It comes in some space sets as well as some pirate sets. This one's got some nice light and dark gray rock printing all over it, especially going up the ramp here looks nice. And then on each of the sides here you also have some. And that really helps to add a lot of size to a model using only one piece. And it's a perfectly fitting base for a model called the King's Mountain Fortress. Anyways, let's go ahead and start building. So here's the completed set, and first we'll take a look at our minifigures. Our first minifigure here is the Ornate Knight on horseback. He is on a white horse, and it's got this very elegant red and gold uh, barding. And the knight himself is pretty cool as well. He's got this nice pointy jousting face guard in dark gray, and that can slide up to reveal his generic smiley face. He's got one of those standard dark gray chest plates, and then a blue crusaders slash lion knight's shield as well as their flag colors. And his torso underneath has that same uh, silvery chest plate printing that we've seen before in Black Knights and other Crusaders and Lion Knights. And of course he's got his short sword and crossbow on the horse in case he needs to fight. Our second knight on horseback here is a little bit more simplistic. He is on a black horse with a red saddle as well. This time he has the yellow variant of the Lion Knight slash Crusader shield. He has the same face guard and chest plate, except his helmet is black this time. He also has the same silver chest plate printing underneath, except this time on a red torso instead of blue. And then he's got the large single plumed red feather. Our next two knights here are just generic guards. 
with the same helmet, same chest plate, same everything. They've got the blue variant of the Crusader shield, and one has a spear, and one has a halberd. Then we have two more generic archers. They've got the archer helmets and a different torso printing there. They've got the yellow variant of the Crusader shield, and two crossbows. Then we've got our princess minifigure. She's got a blue dress denoted by this 2x2x2 two by two by two slope piece in blue. I believe this is the first princess minifig that used a face printing other than just the generic smiley face, but I could be wrong about that. Either way, she's got the same head print that is on the female pirate and forestman figures. She's also got that princess cap in red. And then one of the coolest pieces in this set is this parrot mold in black. I believe this is the only set that includes it in this color. And then our last minifigure here is another one of my favorites, the glow-in-the-dark ghost minifigure. It's a bit of a hassle to get his glow to show up on camera, so I'm not going to demonstrate it here, but if you do want to see that, I did get it on the Black Monarch's Ghost review, so you can go check that out. Either way, just a fantastic mold and a fantastic minifigure. So as you can see, the set has a fantastic cast of characters, and I also think eight minifigures is plenty for a castle of this size, of which six of them are unique minifigures, so good job on LEGO for the figure selection for this set. However, I'm sure you've noticed one of the most glaring oddities of this set is that the King's Mountain Fortress does not include a King minifigure. In fact, the first King we get wouldn't be till 1995 when we get the Royal Knights line that included a King. And so it's very strange to me that this castle here does not include a King, especially when it includes the Princess. So I have to assume that this castle here is probably the king's summer home or something like that, and his daughter has just decided to live here by herself with some knights. So now that we've seen all our minifigures, we can go ahead and take a look at the castle itself. So right at the entrance to the castle, we have these large wooden doors that can just swing open. And then of course, when you don't want visitors, you can go ahead and close them up, and then you can draw up this drawbridge here. You just spin this wheel here with the string attached. There we go, that's as high as it goes. And same as when we sell a Dark Forest Fortress, I've got to give this set props for not requiring you to tie the string to anything else. Instead, it's again just wedged under one of these 1x2 bricks. So as you see when you pull that up there, the string just pops all the way out. And so you're able to fully disassemble the set, and that's something that I really love. But that's not all at the entrance. We have this small little outcrop build that actually hinges open. And when we do, we have this little house in here for the ghost to pop out and scare unwelcomed visitors. One part of the construction of this that I'm not too big a fan of is the connection of the drawbridge here. Um, it's actually on these 1x2 modified, um, I guess, space antenna pieces. The pieces that they would put on the front of the classic spaceships. So you've got these Technic pin plates here that are just resting inside those space antenna pieces. And as such, it's just very loose. Now it does work to be able to raise and lower the drawbridge, but it is very flimsy. So I think that could have been done better, but perhaps they were limited with the pieces they had at the time. And right off the bat, one of my favorite things about this castle is the unique shaping of it. It's definitely not your standard four walls and a tower build, and that's because they were forced to be a little bit inventive because of the base plate that it sits on. So you've got this large tower that's in the center back, and then you've got this large gatehouse that sits at the front corner of the base plate. And of course you've got this ramp that goes up into the castle, but then you've also got this wall cutting straight through the center of the castle, and I think that's a cool design choice there. So if we turn it around here, this is where the entryway from the front of the gatehouse comes into the castle. But then we also see that this area in itself is kind of exterior as well. And then you've got this pit that goes downwards. You've also got this prison here, and it's just big enough for maybe a minifigure or two, and I think that's a really cool feature right there. It fits in nicely with the build, doesn't take up too much space, and isn't too set apart. In fact, it supports the floor above it. And so again, with the wall going around this section here, and these wall pieces facing outwards, it does feel like this is still part of the exterior of the castle. As such, it's hard to kind of determine what is the interior and the exterior of the castle. It kind of just all flows in and around itself. And I think that's really cool. It allows for a lot of imagination for where you want to place your minifigures or how the bad guys are getting in and out and that kind of stuff. And while these walls on the outside here may seem really small, I think the base plate does a great job of showing you that this is built on top of a mountain. And as such, it's still quite a climb to be able to get from here over these walls. So really, these walls are two bricks high plus whatever the height of the base plate is. I think it's like six or seven bricks, something like that. We've also got a nice small tree growing on the side of the mountain here. And then a much larger, more unique tree that I don't think we've seen before. I can't think of any other sets that use the palm tree pieces that are bendable. 
and these leaf pieces on top instead of palm leaves. But it makes a pretty cool normal tree build out of the palm tree pieces, so I like that. So moving back to this pit here, I do appreciate that they actually utilize this space instead of covering it up like some of the base plate builds on this mold do. We've got a treasure chest here, and surprise, surprise, it's got a goblet and some yellow studs to act as gold. Nothing we haven't seen before, but then there is this little trap door here that folds up, and I imagine this is for another type of jail cell or a cellar or something, but since we've got a jail cell there and there are actually no bad guys that are included in the set, I prefer to just hide the treasure chest down there. Another small gripe that I have with this set is that when you close it all the way, the trapdoor is still slightly slanted up in this direction, and that's because of these 1x4 plates at the bottom here. So when you take those 1x4 plates off, it actually sits perfectly flush and doesn't change any of the integrity of the build underneath. So moving it around to the back side of this large tower, we've got these nice window arches here. And then there's this jail cell grate that actually just hinges open like this. Although it seems kind of pointless to me because if you turn it around, this whole segment here is actually just open. So it's not really a jail cell, and maybe it's not supposed to be since we again do have another jail cell down here. So whatever it's supposed to be, it at least helps you get inside this uh, building here. But then they have another kind of strange play feature here and what is supposed to be, I think, a trap door. Um, you pull this axle out and then you can press this uh, 4 by 4 trap door plate down. Now it doesn't really work that well because this piece is not designed to be able to be pushed downwards when it's flushed directly against another plate. Unlike the trap door pieces we see a couple years later that are actually designed to swing downwards. And this one also doesn't swing quickly so you can't really catch anybody off guard. You just kind of have to push it all the way down. So in my opinion this is kind of a worthless play feature. I honestly wasn't even quite sure what it was supposed to be the first time I built it but I'm pretty sure now that it is supposed to be a trap door. Our last segment here is the top of the tower. We've got a crossbow ballista mounted on the wall, as well as two more of the red and blue flags, and then this octagonal railing that goes all the way around. So moving back to the middle segment here, we've got a balcony that overhangs this outer wall area over here. We've also got a two stud wide walkway that runs the full length of this and connects to the front guard tower for the gate. And all this provides plenty of space to pose your minifigures, so I think that's really good. And then looking at the very base, there's even a one wide walkway there to pose your figures on the outermost wall going up the ramp. And this set has plenty of castle wall pieces and corner pieces that we see over here, all around here and on the back of the jail cell. And even two of those wall pieces are printed, both with different printings on them, up here and up here. So adjusted for inflation, the set would have retailed for $118.49. Current used prices have it at $177.22. So overall, I think this is a fantastic castle set with a very unique construction style and a great selection of minifigures, including a ghost and princess. So if you can find this set for a good price, I would highly recommend it. Anyways, that is my review. Thank you for watching.